I have been playing around with this XKCD Gravity comic. It's a comic, I guess. Um, it's a promotion for, you can see right there, for What If 2. Um, XKCD, if, if you don't know XKCD, I don't know what. It's, it's Okay, let's just play with this. And then I want to show you how to get data from this so that you can do some cool physics experiments because I'm kind of obsessed with it right now, so I figured I'd take a break and just show you. So the basic idea is there is no idea. You have this rocket using the arrow keys. You can, you can, uh, you can take off. You can turn. You can fly around. And so here's a, a planet with some stuff on it. Uh, there are other planets too. And uh, I, the one thing, oh, if you get that dot, you turn into a different spaceship. But it doesn't really matter to me. But it does, I think it does the same thing. Uh, fly down. I don't. I try that. It doesn't work. Um, let's just get up here. Okay. Well, um, one of the things that you should notice is this little dot right there. That dot is the location of a gravitation a gravitational object. So if I fly really fast and get far away, you'll see there's another dot right there, another dot. Those are other things that you can go to. Now, you kind of have to stop. Um, ooh, what was that? Think I can get back to that? I've never seen that before. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's see. What the heck is that? What is that? See, this is why I love the game. Is it a road? Is it like... It's probably something from the book. Most of the stuff is from the book, but... It's just... Or maybe it's a wormhole. I don't know. Okay, so let's... I want to figure out how the physics here works, because that's what I like to do. It's fun. Uh, so let's just reset this. And I want to set up a simple experiment. What what kind of gravitational forces do we have on this spacecraft? Uh, it's a very tiny planet, obviously. Uh, so let's just see. The simplest experiment is just to do this. Shoot it... Oops, i got to click on it. Shoot it straight up and just let it come back down. And then measure the motion of that. That's what I'm going to do. There's so many more experiments you could do, but that's the only one I want to do right now. So I've already captured that as a video. So in I use uh, Mac OS, and you can do screen recording very easily. I, I assume there's a way to do it in Windows. There's definitely some programs you can do, um, but this is what it looks like. See, I can record the screen. You can't see quite all of it. I can record, take a picture and things like that, uh, and I already did that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to um, get the position data of the rocket in each frame using video analysis. So there are more than one ways to do this. I like this program right here. Uh, this is Tracker Video Analysis. It's free. It runs in Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux. It's very powerful, I think. Uh, I really like it. I've been using it for at least 15 years. I don't know. How long have I been using this? A long time long time okay so I've already installed that uh, and I've already loaded the program the video into my into my program so I'm gonna make this big or it's not super great but okay so I'm gonna go through some of the steps you would need to do to uh, analyze this uh, the first thing is I just load the video in here and I don't need the whole thing so what I'm going to do is to um, uh, I'm going to move forward, scrub forward, right there. Okay, so this is before I take off, right? Because I actually, and I'm going to step forward a few more frames until right when it takes off. And you don't have to do this, but I want to get just the takeoff part. Okay, there it goes, right there, there. And you'll notice down here it says 114. I'm on frame 114. So I'm going to go up here to the video uh, it's called the show or hide the clip settings, and I want to start at 114. So now it's just gonna it's gonna pretend like 114 is the first frame. Uh, you can set the in frame to. I don't really care about that. Uh, it has the frame rate. Uh, this is apparently recorded at 60 frames per second, which is which is fine. 
um, you can actually change this. If you have a slow motion video and you want to analyze it in real time, you can change the frame rate to what you think it really should be. Uh, but that's just what the video says the frame rate is. Uh, one of the other things I'm going to do is I, I could look at the motion, the position in each frame, but I don't want to do that because I'm lazy. So I'm going to put every 10 frames. So I'm just going to change this to 10. So that's my step size. Every time I, I click, it's going to go 10 frames up ahead. Okay, so now we need to do some other things. Um, I'm going to set the scale. Okay, I, I need to know how big stuff is here. Up here, you click on this, and it says calibration stick. And if I put that, it puts this blue thing over here that's one meter long, and it's got two pluses on it. So if I put, I can move this around and put it wherever I want to measure something. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to measure, I'm going to use this person. And sorry, I'm looking down at the screen. I, I, I don't, some of these things are too small. This My other monitor, I can see a lot better. So I'm going to say it's a 1.75 meter tall person, uh, and that's I'm going to use that to scale. So now I can measure stuff like the size of the planet, which I'll show you how to do too. Um, now I'm going to put down my origin. And here's my origin. You can put it wherever you want. You can rotate it. Uh, I don't want to rotate because I want to keep it at the same place. And, you know, you could a, a, a nice place would be to put it in the center of the planet, but I can't actually see that. So I'm just going to put it on the surface right here. I want to mark it at some place, and I'm gonna zoom in up here to let's say 200. So right there, that's where my my origin's gonna be, which is kind of on the surface of the planet. Now I'm gonna to go to coordinate system, and you'll see some important things. Fixed origin, fixed angle, fixed scale. I do not want that, I do not want that. Scale shouldn't change. As you play around with this, it doesn't zoom in or out, but if it did, you'd have to take that into account. This one doesn't do that. Uh, it does rotate. I don't think I ever, I'm ever going to rotate things, um, but I don't have to worry about that. But if you don't put, if you don't uncheck fixed origin, it's not going to move the origin. It's going to keep it fixed because okay, you're telling it to fix origin. Okay. So now what I need to do is I want to mark the location of that rocket in each frame. But before I do that, I need to reset the location of the origin every frame. Okay, and it's some work, but it's not too bad. So what I'm going to do is click, notice where this is at. I'm going to zoom down a little bit. Notice where my origin is at. It's right there. So if I click one frame forward, which is actually 10 frames, then the origin moved. I can just drag this sucker right back to where it goes. And then I'm going to do it again. Again. I think it's skipping frames. Okay, again. Sometimes you will get that in a lot of situations where it won't, a frame won't do anything. Uh, a lot of times that's due to a uh, frame rate problem. It, 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 I, I find it's not worth fixing. Just keep on, just carry on, just carry on. So I'm going to keep on doing this. Um, it shouldn't take too long. And all I'm doing is putting the origin back where it should be. And there's another trick in this case. I'll show you, I'll show you afterwards. You don't even have to do this. So for each frame, so I'm already at the top because now I see it's coming back down. The rocket's coming back down, so the so the planet's moving back up because it keeps the rocket in the center of the frame. It doesn't have to be perfect here. Oh, that's weird. It kind of moves sideways. Oh, I think I moved the whole thing. Okay. That's weird. Oh, did I turn? I did. I'm so dumb. This isn't what I want. Um, okay, I'm gonna, that's fine. I'm gonna just analyze going up. That's fine, it's fine. Okay, so that's enough. So now what I'm gonna do is go to track and I'm gonna say new track and I'm gonna say a point mass. So point mass is just a single point. And I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the interesting part. I'm gonna move up. And now all I need to do is to mark the location of something on the rocket. And I want to have the same position on the rocket every time. I'm going to use the nose cone, although it doesn't really matter. So what I do is, as long as I have mass A selected, uh, which is it's on, hold down the shift key, and you'll see the, the, the cursor changes into this target thing. And I'm just going to target the top of that. When I click it, it'll move ahead one frame. 
you notice I don't even need to move this at all because the rocket stayed in the same position. The coordinate system is actually moving. So I just click on this until, okay, so now it's starting to turn. Uh, I'll stay right there. Do a lot more data in this, but I'm not doing an analysis. I'm doing, I'm showing you how to do things. Okay, so you see I have position uh, time data right there and I want to get the acceleration. So what I'm gonna do is to right click on this and go to analyze and it'll bring up a different window. Now you'll see my Y versus time data right there. If I click analyze, I can do curve fit, a parabola. You wanna do a parabola uh, and then it fit a parabola to that and it gives you the parameters. So it says uh, Y is A T squared plus B T plus C and that's gonna be A is negative 3.4 plus or minus 0.07, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna deal with uncertainty, although you could, it's, it's a lot of this stuff. So then from that, I can get the acceleration, right? Because the acceleration is twice that value. Because if I think of, if, if it has constant acceleration, if it has constant acceleration, then uh, you could use the kinematic e equation one half at squared plus uh, v0t plus y0, and that should work. Which, which, you know, you wouldn't expect this would be constant acceleration, right? Because it clearly goes uh, very high compared to the size of the planet. Um, but the data fits really well. So it seems like it is constant acceleration. Okay, I wanna show you uh, some other really great things you can do here. So if I go back over to this window and click this and change to VY, I can actually get the Y velocity. And so what it does here is, and let's uh, analyze that. Uh, now, it's going to keep the old graph on there, too. I'm going to deselect the Ys. I don't want those. I just want the velocities. Okay. Um, and I think this shows you the uncertainty of the pink. I'm not sure. That's actually new. I don't know about that. Uh, so this shows you the velocity of the function of time. Basically, it does a numerical derivative on the data, which it turns out pretty nice. So this shows that the velocity is decreasing. This shows that it is constant decreasing so that would be a constant acceleration which is again that agrees with the other data it's just not what i would expect okay so what else can you do oh and we need to do the following we need to measure the radius of the planet because that is important so let's go do that i'm going to click over here to two fit so i can see the whole planet right there uh, now i'm going to go to new and I can't always remember where it is. Uh, no, measure, that's what it is. So there's a measure thing right here, measure. New. There's a tape measure there and there's a circle fitter. Okay, so it tells you what to do. It says mark the location of three points to fit to the circle. So I'm just gonna start over here. Now this one, it's a little uh, wanky. Again, you hold on the shift key because I can't really see where the circle is. So I'm gonna uh, guess. I'm going to start marking a bunch of these locations along the surface. Now here it's a little flat, so I'm actually going to guess higher. I'm just going to pick over here. Okay, so I mean it's not perfect, but it's fine. And you'll see right here, this is my circle A fitter data. Um, that I have a, it gives me the X and the Y center and the radius. So this is 28.1 meter radius uh, for that. Of course, that depends on the size of the person over here. So it, it's really uh, kind of a rough guess. Everything's pretty rough here because uh, there's no definite length of that person. You know, it's hard to even measure that. So uh, it's good. This is, that's what makes this great for a lab, right? Because there's uncertainty involved. There's estimations uh, and things like that. Okay, let's open up a new tab and let's do this again. Um, so I'm going to drag in my video. That's all you have to do. It, it does take a second to, to load it, but that's fine. Um, and there it is. And let's see, I, I was doing something weird. I wanna just go up and back down. Did I not do that? I thought I did, maybe I'd you know what I did? It was, let's do file, new tab. I think it was, no, I thought I did it. Okay, that's fine. Um, so go back to 
this one. Now, one of the things I can do is the following. If I want to mark the location of the, the spacecraft, what I can do is to put the origin at the spacecraft, okay? And then keep the origin fixed. Now, if I want to, to see how this thing moves, what I can do is go to new, I didn't scale this because I'm just, I'm just showing you, uh, new point mass. And then I'm going to mark, let's say, uh, the location, see that little dot right there? I'm gonna mark that location. Let's just see what happens if I mark that. So I'm going to click mark, mark, mark. Oh, I, and I didn't even, I, I didn't even skip 10 steps. So this is um, one frame per step. It's not too bad, right? It's just mindless work. There is an auto tracker that will actually track these things automatically, but I never had good luck with those. So uh, I, I typically just want to make sure that I'm in control. I like to be in control of stuff. And I just keep clicking this, that same point. Okay, and you'll see that I'm getting the Y and X position of this with respect to the spacecraft. So if I take from that, I could find the location of the spacecraft. Uh, and that way I don't have to worry about moving the origin around, which I have to do manually each time. In this particular case, because the scale doesn't change, because the, the spacecraft is always at the, at the center of the frame, you can do that. You can instead measure objects and you're really measuring the frame. There's a way to do that from the coordinate system to uh, reference frame mass A, and then uh, you know it'll, it'll do that. So, but then it doesn't it doesn't rotate and things like that. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of really cool things to explore uh, in this game. Going back over here, um, you know, I I did try to uh, I wanted to make a circular orbit. At this point, if there is constant gravity um it uh, you really you can only get one circular orbit right um even though they show he shows the um newton's cannonball right there uh another thing that i i kind of figured out is that if you go up higher like this the acceleration isn't constant it's discrete right so i i'm not sure how it works but somehow, uh, at either at a certain position or at a certain velocity, the acceleration changes. And then we have this flipping thing here too, which is really kind of weird. I haven't figured that out either. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff to figure out, a whole bunch of stuff. There's other planets. Do they have the same gravitational force or do they have different gravitational forces? How does it all work? I want to know. Uh, the other thing I want to know is if I get somewhere and be stationary, looking at the background stars, I'm going to try to get this as stationary as possible. That's pretty close. Um, and then what's the F equals MA? I mean, if I just hold this down, how, how fast do I go? Can I go, do I keep increasing in speed? I don't think so, why is it turning? Uh, so there you go. Lots of fun stuff to play with. I'm gonna make some more, I'm gonna do some more analysis. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but uh, that's really wanted to give you an introduction into how to use tracker video analysis. Hope you have fun with that, but not too much fun. Later. <laughs>